Hi, my name is Keely from The Bound Bindery and I'm going to show you how to design a book cover using Canva and Silhouette Studio. In this video, we'll be creating a design to apply to our hardcover case using heat transfer vinyl. The design for this series is inspired by the Penguin Clothbound Classic aesthetic as well as the Harry Potter iconography. The designs aren't necessarily going to match the book but the idea is for the whole series to look coherent. So to start our design, we're gonna use Canva and I always start with a blank document that is the size I want my final design. This means that my design is gonna be one centimeter shorter in both the height and width of my front cover. This is because I like to have a half a centimeter overhang around the edge of my design. So for this book, my design will be 11.5 centimeters by 19.5 centimeters. Because I like my books to have a border, I always start with a square that I then fit to the entire canvas. And then what I'm going to do is make that transparent and then go into the border, make sure it has one and set the border width to five. Next, you're going to drag in some text to make the heading of your book. To do this, I just drag that in. I prefer Times New Roman as the font, but you can choose whatever you want here. And I choose size 18. I find this is a good size for later on down the track when I'm having to cut it out with my silhouette. It's not too fine. And then I'm just going to go in and type in the heading of my book. And now is a good opportunity to double check that you're spelling it correctly. I'll just move this to the top of the page, roughly where I think it looks good, try to make it centered. And then I just copy and paste that down the bottom so that it keeps the formatting the same and just type over the author's details here. Then I'll do the same thing, drag it down the bottom and just make sure it's centered. So now that we have the framework, so your border, header and author, we can start choosing the design for our cover. I usually just start by typing in the keyword for the image that I want and then I just start scrolling through and I start to drag over the ones that I like and that I think that I might use. But a couple of tips for what we're looking for is you don't want anything too detailed or with multiple colours or shading because when we cut this out with our silhouette we're only going to have one monochrome colour that we can work with. A couple of tips for searching for elements that you want to be able to cut out with a silhouette is you can type in vector on the end of it or you could type in silhouette. These are some terms that will help you get icons that are appropriate to cut out with a silhouette. And if you find a design you like, you can also right click it and select see more like this. Now that I have all the designs that I like, I'm going to take a closer look at them and decide which ones I actually want to use in my design. So the one that I have here, you can see it's just a little bit too detailed and I'm not convinced my silhouette will cut that out properly. And the same with these wings here. So I'm gonna remove those two, but I really like the two that I'm left with. So now that I've decided to use these two, I'm gonna change them to black. This is just gonna help me see if there's anything that's not gonna work on the design. And I'm gonna to start to place them around my cover. The feel that I want to go for for this is that very mix matched all over the place sort of look so I can really just go crazy with this and I'm just going to start placing them wherever I want. The only thing I'm really aiming to do here is just make sure they're evenly spaced apart but I want them to be facing all different directions. Um, I'm going to invert a couple of them, flip them horizontally just so it really has that random look to it. So I'm just going to speed through some of this so you don't have to see me place every single one, but that's what I'm doing. Now that I'm happy with my front cover, I'm going to duplicate my design and use this as the start of my back cover. It's at this point I'm also going to label my designs and this is so when I download them I can tell which is which. To do the back, because I want it to look really similar to the front, I'm just going to remove the text and then fill in the blanks with some more of those icons. Now we have our front and back covers and we can move on to the spine. 
So to do this, I'm just gonna add an additional page down the bottom. I'm gonna do the same as what I did for that border at the start. So bring in your shape, make it transparent, set the border to the exact same, except this time we're gonna set the width to the width of our um, hardcover book spine. Again, I'm taking off a centimeter of the width so that I have that half a centimeter overhang. And so for this, it's gonna be 2.5 centimeters wide and then the exact same height as your cover. So 19.5 centimeters. I'm then gonna scroll back to the top and copy and paste my heading. And this time I'm gonna rotate it and stretch it out so that it goes the length of the book. Now that your text is all on one line, we're gonna move it to the middle and just keep it slightly aligned to the right because we wanna make space for the author's name below that. And I'm also just gonna make the font a little bit smaller here so that it matches the size of the spine. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm actually gonna copy this so that I can keep the formatting the same for the author's name. Like with the front cover, now that we have our text and border in place, we can start putting the design back in. For this, the only difference is I don't mind if the design is gonna overhang over that border. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm happy with where it's placed in the spine and we'll sort the rest out later. Now that I'm happy with where all the designs are placed, I'm just gonna show you here that it's actually not possible to crop these so that they don't show over the border. So my little workaround for this is I'm actually going to get another square shape like we have done before, and I'm gonna keep this one white, and we're just gonna cover up that design. Once you have it covering one side, you can just copy and paste it and cover up the other side as well. And this way, what you're left with is your design. This is the only thing the silhouette is going to see and we'll be able to use that to cut it out. So there you have it, your final design all created in Canva. The next step here is to download this so we can import it into Silhouette Studio. So download, I don't make it a transparent background, I keep it as is and just a JPEG or PNG file is fine and we'll import these shortly. So now we're gonna open up Silhouette Studio and you can either drag and drop your designs into the file here, but I just go up to the top, open and click okay, and it will open up in a new design. For some reason, once you import the design, it changes the dimensions of it. So I do always make sure the height is exactly what I originally had it as. It works in inches, again, for some reason, if you know how to change that to centimeters, please let me know. But for now, I just know that in inches, it's 7.67, and that gives me the same height that I had before. So what I do is I just open up each design. Again, they open up in a different tab each time. If someone knows how you can open it up all into the one design, please let me know. But for now, I just open them all up, and then I will copy and paste them into the one design, just so I'm working from the same spot. Now that I have all my designs in the same folder, I'm gonna use the trace and cut feature and this is how we're actually gonna set the cut lines for our silhouette. So I select the trace area, then I highlight just the first cover and I work each file at a time. Now I'm increasing the threshold until I'm happy with how thick the cut lines are, just to make sure none of the design is gonna get cut off and that nothing's too thin. Here I go all the way up to 100, but you can see it's a little bit too thick and some of the cut lines aren't showing through. So what I then do is take it back to 80, and here you can see that's the perfect balance of 
nothing being too thin and being able to cut out the design completely. So from here I just click trace and then I take away the original design and all I'm left with are the cut lines. And then I just repeat that exact same process for the back cover. Last but not least, we have the spine. And as you can see here, because we use those white boxes, none of the overhanging design is showing through. And we can just treat this like we would do the front and back. And as soon as we delete the original cover, we're just left with that two and a half centimeter spine. If you have a really simple design, you can probably stop here, but I can see some of these cut lines are really, really small. So what I'm gonna do is right click and release the compound path. And what this means is I can zoom in and go through it with a fine tooth comb and delete any cuts that are too small for my silhouette to make. And you'll get to know your silhouette over time to know what it can and can't cut. But I know that there are a couple in here that it just, I won't be able to weed out of the design. So I'm just gonna speed through this process and I'll repeat this on the back and spine piece as well. Once you're confident you've removed all of the cuts that are too small for your machine to make, you can just highlight it again, right click and select make compound path and that will bring your design all together. So now we have our final design, we have all of the cut lines and we know that our silhouette can make all of the cuts. The next step is to flip horizontally. The reason for this is the silhouette is going to cut onto the back of the design and you're going to flip it over when you apply it to your book so you need to make sure that it's flipped. And then we're going to go to the top right and click send and this is where we send it to our silhouette. You can either select the material or you can manually write in your settings. I like to manually write them in. You get to know your machine over time. You may need to play around with these, but these are the settings that work best for me. So I have a blade depth of four, a force of five, speed eight, and just one pass over. And then from here, I will send to my machine. I don't have it plugged in right now, but this is where you'll be able to do that. If you've chosen a heat transfer material, it will give you the option to flip here. But if we've already inverted your design, you don't need to do that again here. And there you have it. You have your design ready to transfer onto your hardcover book. If you wanna know how to do that, you can watch my video on how to make a hardcover case. That will show you how to apply your heat transfer vinyl. Thank you so much for watching and happy binding.